Hi there, I'm Adrian Salisbury and I want to give you an update on Ecamm Live. You might not have seen that in the middle of December there was an update 3.3 and there are some great features and I just want to do a summary of it on here with really the top five that I think you should be looking out for. Now I must point out that Kent and Glenn did an unboxing and a Q&A session midway through December. Uh, I've put a link to it, go check that out. But I just wanted to give you my highlights and my kind of take on what they've done. What are the five most exciting things about this latest update? Well the first of them is video backgrounds and for me to demonstrate this I need to pull my green screen up. So up till now when I want to do green screen I can come over here and I can go through a selection of photos and actually I have to say they've updated this as well. There are some new backgrounds in here that are a bit better than the previous ones. That's one of the original ones um, and check this out as well as images as backgrounds you now can have videos. Whoa! <laughs> now you're going to freak out your audience if you've got that going behind you while you're trying to do a tutorial or have a serious talk to somebody but you can do some nice effects and all I need to do is to grab a video from my desktop or somewhere else, drag it up over here where it says select background and when I drop it on there there's this nice little scene going on behind me. Now you can go to stock libraries, there are free stock libraries that you'll find video transitions and backgrounds like this. Maybe actually you could record a scene in an office uh, similar to this kind of thing but actually do it as a video and every now and again somebody might walk past or you can just see some movement over there in the background or maybe it's a window and you can just see cars going past you. It just takes it to that next level and makes it more believable because this is kind of taking your normal still image background to the next level. <laughs> So that's our first one being video backgrounds. Now the second one I'm even more excited about because I'm pretty sure I was the first person that spoke to Glenn about this when we did a recap with the Ecamm Live Academy last year. One of the things I said to him was I got so into it and I'm pulling people's comments onto the screen and then I'd suddenly look back at the comments and then I'd suddenly look back at my comments feed and someone would say get that comment off. So what is his second feature? Well, when I bring a comment up on screen like this, normally I can see a feed coming through and I'd go, hi Daniela, yeah, thank you for that. And I carry on talking and I've got to manually click that to take it off or go on to the next one myself. So I said to Glenn, it would be great if there was a way of that just automatically disappearing after a few seconds. And guess what? That's my second feature. So now when I come over here to preferences and I come into the general tab, uh, right at the bottom here it says automatically hide comment overlays after 10 seconds uh, and it's ticked by default. You can then change that if you want to be 5 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever you want um, but that's a fact or you could turn it off altogether. But to me that is a fantastic feature and it's just if you haven't been there and you haven't experienced it and you haven't had that frustration of coming off a call going ah. Oh, why did I mess it up by not taking that off? Then it might not be such a big deal to you but to me this is a biggie and I'm really happy. Obviously it's not doing it on this screen recording because we're not actually live at this point but if we were live and I brought Daniela's comment on 10 seconds later that's going to disappear. Nice and simple, a great feature. Now the third feature is camera effects or picture settings as it's called in the camera effects tab. So what I can do, now I'm still here on my green screen at the minute and it doesn't matter whether I'm in this green screen mode or I'm shooting normally but picture settings, look there's a little drop down over here now and I can adjust all of these different elements. Look brightness, it's not just in that background because I'm on green screen. I can adjust the temperature. Now I know from working with people in the Ecamm Academy last year, if you've got a webcam and it's just going to do the white balance itself then all of a sudden you put a green screen up behind you and it will probably mess up the colour of you. So this is where this could be really useful. Now if I come out of green screen for a minute and I get rid of this. Obviously when I'm adjusting the brightness it's adjusting the whole scene. 
Uh, color temperature, so I can go cooler down this end. I get warmer as I go that way. So again, just find the ground in the middle where you think, push it too far each way, bring it back and go, yep, that looks about right. Now please don't just settle for a rubbish feed coming in and go, ah, oh, it's no problem because I can sort it out in the software. Still try and get the best quality coming through as you can. Uh, but it just does allow you to adjust that slightly if need be. Um, or you can do this and take it black and white if you want to. That might be quite nice as a second feed, for instance. If I'd got two cameras going there, maybe I wanted to cut between two cameras and one of them I want to be this black and white feed. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can do this in here. It's designed, and I can just hit reset and it goes back, but it's designed just to correct slightly if need be. Now, one of the good features, as you just saw there, if I've got a second feed coming in, so maybe this is my guest coming in over Skype, um, I can actually go up into here and I can choose which camera I want. So the display eyesight is the one in my monitor, and um, I can actually adjust that one if I want to, to try and improve it and match up the color to what's going on <laughs> in the other scene. Not doing very successful there. But yeah, you get the idea. Okay, so if you'd got a guest who was coming on and they were looking, uh, it, you know, the color was really bad for them, it gives you a chance to try and sort it out slightly here, um, as well as, uh, as you know, hopefully, you know, you can zoom in and things on here as well. Um, all right, so there you go, that's uh, picture settings, camera effects. I'm gonna reset that on there and I'm gonna get rid of that guy. Our fourth feature that's been introduced is based around video. Now, again, I've seen the comments, people are doing video intros for say a minute and they want a way for it to transition across. So you don't wanna do a one minute countdown timer and a video playing and then have to sit hovering going right now and then you've changed your scene over to the next one. What they've done is to give you an option to say, when you play a video, so if I load up a scene as I'm about to that's got a video in it, it will automatically play for me. But now when it gets to the end, it won't just stay there. It says to me, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna loop it again? Or do I want to move on to the next scene? And that's what we're going to choose. So when I click here, we're gonna play this video. Hello, my name is Lisa Shaw and I teach machine embroidery software. I have just finished the five days of Ecamm Academy taught by Adrian Salisbury. I've been using Ecamm for quite a few months now. I have a weekly broadcast on my Facebook page. Don't walk, run, jump, sign up, take the time to invest in the class because you will not be sorry. There you go. As soon as it got to the end of that video, boom, it's just come over to here to the next scene. Now, I love this because this originally was done for an intro. And uh, when I heard Ken and Glenn talking about it the other day when they were introducing this feature, um, th that was really all they were seeing with it. But I'm going, all right, having done webinars through Ecamm and presentations where I want to bring on a little testimonials like that, I'm thinking, I can use it part way through. You know, I get to a point, bearing, and when I run down scenes, I set up a, le a list of scenes when I'm doing a presentation. And I know that when I get to this point and I say, right, now I want to play my testimonial, I'm going to be able to click that scene and sit back for a minute while it goes through. In fact, it gives me a chance to have a quick look at the comments while that's playing, as long as I haven't got picture in picture on. And I'm also thinking I could queue up two or three testimonial videos that are maybe 30 seconds long and I could put them in a scene one below the other, knowing that scene one is going to automatically start when I click it. When it gets to the end of the video, it's gonna to jump to the next scene and play that one and onto the next one. And I could get through three testimonials without touching a thing and all that's gonna happen is when they've gone through, it's gonna come straight back to the scene of me here at the end. How cool is that? So I reckon there's lots of ways we can use this and maybe tell me in the comments, can you think of other ways that we could use this feature? So I love that one, a transition there at the end. So while your video is playing there, you can click up here in your little tab at the top uh, decide whether you want picture in picture first of all, and then say, what do you want to do? Do nothing, loop, or go to next scene. And that's it, it's set. Now you can go and finish the rest of your scenes. Now the final one is about frame rates, and it might not be that exciting to you, you might not even know what I'm talking about, but 
and I'm not going to get into it. Again, I might put a link in the description if you want to find out more about it or let me know in the comments if you want to know more and I'll send you a link to explore it all. But depending on where you are in the world, as you can see from this map, if you're in America, then you're at a different frame rate than what we are in the UK and the rest of the world, really. It's down to the electricity supply that we have. It's to do with the flicker that we have in the lights and the rate that they refresh at. It's to do with whether you've got PAL TV or NTSC. And while this isn't going to affect your live stream, it does make a difference to that end file that you get out of this. Now, we live stream, or as you can see on my screen, it's ticked on there to record only. And I get a file at the end of it that's local. It hasn't had to come from the internet. It's a really high quality local file. And if I wanna do like I'm doing now and sync that in with the video that I've had out of my camera, then my camera's recording at 25 frames per second because I'm in the UK. So it stands to reason that I want the video to come out of my computer that I'm then gonna pair it up with to also be recorded at that. So I can go into my settings on here and inside the stream tab here, frame rate, mine is now set to 25. If you were in the States, then you wanna set that to 30 frames per second. And really you can just set it and forget about it. And you don't really need to understand why. It's not a big deal, as I say, unless you're uh, using the output of this and wanna take it into an editing software, sync it up with another bit of footage that has been recorded at a different frame rate. But like I say, for me, that's a big plus. Now, there were two more that nearly made it into this list. So I wanted to keep it to five. I'd got seven and I thought, no, I'm gonna get it down to five. Who am I gonna knock out of this? Well, the first of those, which in effect is number six, is transitions. Now, you might notice that as I flick between scenes on here, it's a very definite cut. So I can come up here to my settings again and under video, I can go cross dissolve. So you can see now that there is a much smoother cross dissolve as I'm changing between those two. Um, white flash does this. Um, swipe, you kind of get the idea. Now the reason this didn't make it into my top five is partly because I find these a bit tacky. Uh, I can't stand watching videos where people do these you know, big transitions and slide effects. And actually the only transition that I tend to use in Final Cut Pro is one called Fade to Color. And I tend to use white, and as you can see now, it just goes to white and then comes back again. And sadly, that one's not in here. So, you know, well done Ecamm, I like the idea, I like the thinking of putting transitions in here, but I would like to see that more subtle Fade to Color one, uh, or just simply a Fade to White or a Fade to Black. So for that reason, it didn't make my top five. The other one that almost made it into the top five and is still worth talking to you about is snapping. So images, when I drop them on here, uh, now look at this, I can, it tells me there, I get a blue line to say that that is in the center. And when I get near the edges, there is a boundary that it just says to me, right, that's pretty much a safe place to go. I don't have to stick with it, I can go up to the corner if I want, but that's a great feature. Now this doesn't only apply to images, it applies to text overlays that you can create inside Ecamm. As I move them around, uh, it'll show me that I'm in the center. Now, I'm sure this has really come from people saying, we're doing interviews and we wanna know that our name is sitting in the center. And if we were interviewing two people, check this out it brings me a line in the center of each half of the screen. So there you go. I can know that I'm centered up on both of those screens and uh, yeah, a really good little feature. Now, one of the reasons this didn't make it to the top for me was that I would really like this not only telling me horizontally when I'm in the center, but I'd like to know vertically that I'm in the center and it doesn't do that. And I think it's a very simple little update. I'm sure it is if you can do this. Uh, I'd quite like to know that I'm bang in the center. Now, I know I wouldn't put a text there, but it may well be that if I were bringing an image or something in that I'd like to know, hey, that is bang in the center both ways. So 
really good. I'd just love to see a little minor update that gave me that horizontal line as well. So that's my roundup of what I consider the top five features in this 3.3 update. Do go and check out that video of Ken and Glenn's. I'll link to it below. And if you want more help with Ecamm, I would love to support you inside the Ecamm Live Academy. Full details below. Thank you so much. I'll see you in another video.